Induction furnace is a type of furnace in which currents induced in the metals by electromagnetic action are used to heat and melt the metals. In the induction furnace, a coil carrying alternating electric currents surrounds the container or chamber of metal. Eddy currents are induced in the metal charge, the circulation of these current producing extremely high temperature for melting the metal and for making alloy of exact composition. Induction furnaces are ideal for melting and alloying a wide variety of metals with minimum melt losses. It does not require any flame or gases that can be harmful to the environment to melt metals. However, little refining of the metal is possible. The advantage of the induction furnace is a clean energy efficient and well-controlled melting process compared to most other means of metal melting. Parts of induction furnace. The induction furnace consists basically of a crucible, inductor coil, shell, cooling system, and tilting mechanism. The crucible is formed from refractory material, which the furnace coil is lined with. This crucible holds the charge material and subsequently the melt. The inductor coil is a tubular copper coil with specific number of turns. An alternating current passes through it and magnetic flux is generated within the conductor. The magnetic flux generated produces eddy currents that enable the heating and melting process in the crucible. The shell is the outer part of the furnace. It houses the crucible and the inductor coil and has higher thermal capacity. The cooling system is a through one-way flow system with a tubular copper coil connected to water source through flexible rubber hose. The tilting mechanism is to affect pouring of the melt for casting. The furnace is usually tilted to achieve an angle of 90 degree or greater for complete pouring of the liquid steel. Working principle of the induction furnace. Induction furnace produces their heat cleanly without combustion. Alternating electric current from a power unit flows into an induction furnace through a coil made of hollow copper tubing. The tubing allows the coil to be cooled by passing water through it en route to a heat exchange system. The coil creates an electromagnetic field that passes through the refractory material and couples with the conductive metal charge inside the furnace. This induces electric current to flow inside the metal charge, which produces heat that is used to melt the metal. The principle of induction heating is mainly based on two well-known phenomena, electromagnetic induction and joule effect. When alternating currents flow in a conductor, it produces alternating magnetic flux. If conducting metal charge is placed within the flux path, EMF is induced in the material. The induced EMF develops eddy current within the material. The eddy current flowing through the electrical resistance of the metal charge produces high temperature use to heat the charge by joule heating effects. In the case of non-magnetic material, the heat developed will be due to eddy current loss. Whereas, in the case of magnetic material, the heat developed will be due to both eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. Once melted, the eddy current causes vigorous stirring of the melt. The stirring action is important, since it serves to maintain a uniform temperature throughout the charge. Types of induction furnace. Induction furnace are basically into two types, they are 1. Coreless induction furnace. 2. Channel induction furnace. In a coreless induction furnace, there is no core, and thus, heating of material will be due to eddy current flowing through it. The furnace consists of a refractory or ceramic crucible in a cylindrical shape. The crucible is surrounded by a coil, which acts as the primary. When the primary is connected to an alternating current supply, it induces an eddy current in the charge to be heated. Due to the absence of a core in this furnace, flux density in the furnace is low. Thus, the supply to the primary should be of high frequency in order to compensate for low flux density. Therefore, this furnace is also called a high-frequency induction furnace. Channel induction furnace consists of a refractory lined steel shell which contains molten metal. Attached to the steel shell and connected by a throat is an induction unit which forms the melting components of the furnace. The induction unit consists of an iron core in the form of a ring around which a primary induction coil is wound. The furnace is therefore essentially a transformer in which the charge to be heated forms a single-turned short-circuited secondary 
and is magnetically coupled to primary by an iron core. When there is no molten metal, no current will flow in the secondary. Thus, to start the furnace, the molten metal is to be poured into the hearth. Channel induction furnace are commonly used for melting low melting point alloy. Advantages of induction furnace. Suitable for periodic operations. No noise, dust, dirt, or any contamination in its operations. Heat transferred can be closely monitored and flexible temperature control. Suitable for the production of high-grade alloys. Good for surface hardening of metals and non-ferrous metals. Disadvantages of induction furnace. Applicable for limited materials. High cost of equipment. Lack of refining capacity. The material placed in an induction furnace must be clean of oxidation products and its composition must be known. The required lining material is selected according to the type of smelting steel.